play toys. Sergeant's free $3 gift offer. Get details on this Sergeant store display. Exciting night of the week, Boxy Ladies, and Dance Until Dawn. <laughs> and now, all the excitement and fever of Saturday Night Disco, captured in this fantastic record collection, Disco Mania. Do the hustle! Here, the original uncut million sellers by the stars that made them famous. 20 of the greatest disco hits of all time. You'll never find as long as you live. Shake it up, shake it down. Move it in. Disco and as a bonus, this illustrated booklet of easy-to-learn instructions that can teach you all the very latest disco dances. Saturday Night Disco Mania with the bonus dance instructions just $7.99. Only $9.99 for the complete eight track tape. So long, so long. Be cool. So Order yours now. Call 586 5020. That's 586 5020. Or save COD postage and handling by rushing $7.99 for the record treasury or $9.99 for the eight track to Disco Mania. Box 1030, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10019. That's 20 all-time disco hits, plus the bonus dance instructions. Channel 2, New York. From Channel 2 News, here is the early morning report. It's 67 degrees and raining in midtown Manhattan, and Monday is expected to be a rainy, generally unpleasant day. I'll have the forecast in a few minutes. More than 1,000 angry black residents and about 250 off-duty police officers demonstrated within minutes of each other outside a Jewish synagogue Sunday in New York City's Crown Heights section of Brooklyn. The off-duty police were in the area for a brief service to honor 11 policemen who have died there in the line of duty in the past 16 years. The demonstrating police left while a separate group of 200 on-duty officers remained and black marchers arrived. The blacks demonstrated at both the police precinct and the synagogue for Orthodox Hasidic Jews. The blacks are angry over two incidents last month. In one, a black civic leader died in police custody. In the other, a 16-year-old black was beaten into a coma, allegedly by Hasidic youths. No incidents were reported in the demonstrations. Representatives of seven nations meeting at the economic summit in Bonn have put together a plan to thwart hijacking by banning flights to countries harboring captive airliners. The precise nature of all the anti-hijacking measures is being withheld pending the advice of international lawyers. However, in general, the aim is to deter international hijacking by making the risk too costly. By many accounts, Japan's Prime Minister Fukuda initiated the discussion of hijacking, 
Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau followed this up with suggestions for several concrete actions that could be taken. Leaders at the summit have accepted President Carter's efforts to reduce U.S. energy consumption and oil imports. In exchange, Mr. Carter won commitments from other nations to speed economic growth. Carter told the leaders of six nations at the meeting Sunday that Congress will pass the first part of his long-stalled energy program on Tuesday. After the first of two days of meetings, Mr. Carter told reporters he had not decided whether to impose quotas to reduce oil imports, and it appears from the statements of others at the summit that the U.S. has not committed itself to expand its efforts to reduce the imports. Oil imports are a big reason for the decline in the dollar's value overseas, a drop that's a concern at the bond meeting. Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin says his government will consider new Egyptian peace proposals on their merits. Begin made the comment after the Israeli cabinet revealed Sunday that Egypt's President Sadat offered new ideas for a Mideast in his talks with the Israeli Defense Minister in Austria last week. Israeli officials have refused to reveal the details of any of the proposals. However, news reports say Sadat wants Israel to propose a new border between Israel and the West Bank of the Jordan. German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt has criticized U.S. protest against the trials of Soviet dissidents Anatoly Sharansky and Alexander Ginsburg. In a broadcast interview, Schmidt said he did not think the American comments are doing any good for the people in Iron Curtain countries. Smith made his comments in an interview taped for airing Sunday in the United States. UN Ambassador Andrew Young arrived in Belgrade Sunday for talks scheduled with Yugoslav officials. Young faced reporters' questions about his controversial statement that the United States held political prisoners. Young said his remarks were an attempt to show what he called the ridiculousness of Soviet trials of dissidents. Young's previous remark that there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of political prisoners in the U.S. has been criticized by many Americans, including President Carter. Senate Majority Leader Robert Byrd said Young should get one more chance, but should be fired if he embarrasses the nation again. A study made public Sunday says the Carter administration is not doing much better than the Ford administration on restricting U.S. arms sales overseas. The report published by the Brookings Institution credits the administration with good intentions, but the study says the White House faces pressure to continue past patterns of arms sales. Turning to sports on the home team scoreboard, a couple of losers, Cincinnati humbled the Mets 9-2, and Kansas City beat the Yankees 3-1. to one. Elsewhere in the American League today, the Boston Red Sox padded their lead in the Eastern Division with a doubleheader sweep over the Minnesota Twins. Boston now has eight and a half games on the Milwaukee Brewers, 12 games on the Baltimore Orioles, and 13 games on the New York Yankees, who have slipped into fourth place. Vitas Garolitis was all over the court today at Forest Hills in New York, while his opponent, Ilya Nastasi, remained cautiously at the baseline. And the aggressiveness paid off for Garolitis, who dismissed Nastasi 6-2-6 love to take the $100,000 top prize at the World Championship Tennis Invitational. Golfer Joanne Carner defended her title at the LPGA tournament in Dublin, Ohio today with a dramatic chip shot on the final hole of the $85,000 match. She ended up with a seven under par 209 for 54 holes, one stroke ahead of Pat Bradley and Betsy King. And I'll have the weather forecast in just a moment. Good morning. If you work nights the way I do, you miss a lot of great TV shows, but I don't miss them anymore, thanks to Sony's Betamax deck, which hooks up to any TV set. While I am out, Betamax is automatically videotaping my favorite show for me to play back when I get home. And now I'm going to watch it. Sony Betamax, available at Crazy Eddie's. Blah, blah, blah. 
Get a new stereo, get a color TV, get a car stereo, CB, Sony Betamax, TV video game, get it now. Because Crazy Eddie can't be beat. With prices so low, he's practically giving it all away. Shop around, get the best prices you can find, then go to Crazy Eddie for the most ridiculous prices ever. Call 645-1196. Remember, Crazy Eddie gives you the largest selection, professionally staffed service centers, and the most ridiculous prices you can find. So go to a Crazy Eddie superstore now, because Crazy Eddie's prices are insane. Now, here's Irv Joukowsky's weather forecast. It will be raining for most of the rest of the night, possibly becoming heavy towards dawn, the low in the 60s. Rain will continue through Monday, heavy at times, with the possibility of a thunderstorm, the high temperature in the 70s. And no let up Monday night, cloudy skies with possible showers, the low in the 60s. The outlook for Tuesday, some clearing, with the temperature getting into the 80s. Right now, the midtown temperature is 67 degrees, and it's raining. That's the early morning report from Channel 2 News. Dave Campbell reporting. Have a good Monday.